Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Rani Maupadhyay's Chemistry Lab videos. In today's video, we'll discuss about the YVOC questions based on colorimetry. Today's experiment is estimation of copper in the given copper sulfate solution using colorimetry. So let us come to the questions. What is colorimetry? Colorimetry means measurement of color. You are saying measurement of color. That means you are going to be restricted to the special region in the electromagnetic spectrum. What is that region? It is the visible region. What is the visible range? Visible range is from 400 to 750 nanometers. Now I have given you a copper sulfate solution. How you will perform this experiment? To perform the Estimation of copper in the given copper sulfate solution. I have to add ammonium hydroxide to the test solution. Why you have to add ammonium hydroxide to the test solution? When we add ammonium hydroxide to the test solution, it produces a deep blue color. This deep blue color is due to the formation of cupramonium sulfate complex, which absorbs maximum at 620 nanometers which falls in the visible range. So can you determine the concentration of any given substance in a colorless solution? Yes, I can do the experiments by developing a color which absorbs in the visible range. If it happens then I can go for determination of the substance using colorimetry. What is the principle upon which the colorimetry is based? Colorimetry is based on Beer's law and Lambert's law. What is Beer's law? Beer's law states that when a monochromatic light passes through a transparent medium, the decrease in the intensity of light with the concentration of the medium is directly proportional to the intensity of the light. Or we can say that the intensity of the transmitted light decreases exponentially when the concentration of the solution increases arithmetically and it is expressed as ln io by it is equal to kc where io is the intensity of the incident light, it is the intensity of the transmitted light, k is a constant and c is the concentration of the solution. What is Lambert's law? Lambert's law states that when a monochromatic light passes through a transparent medium, the decrease in the intensity of the light with the thickness of the medium is directly proportional to the intensity of the light. And it is given by ln io by it is equal to kx, where x is the thickness of the medium. On combining the two laws, we get io by it is equal to k c x. Now we can replace this k by another constant that is e which is epsilon. What is the unit of epsilon or e? It is expressed as liter mole inverse centimeter inverse. Why we are taking epsilon? Epsilon is taken because for a particular system, epsilon remains constant. So how will you determine the concentration with the help of absorbance? We have seen with the help of Lambert's Beer's law that A is equal to E C X. That means if E is constant for a particular system and we are taking the same cell throughout the experiment whose diameter is 1 centimeter that is unity then A will be equal to C. So by determining the absorbance, measuring the absorbance and plotting the calibration curve we can determine the concentration of the test solution with the help of calibration curve for a particular substance. What is wavelength? Wavelength is 
defined as the distance between two consecutive crest or probe. What is wave number? Wave number is defined as the number of waves per second. What are the various regions in an electromagnetic spectrum? The various regions in an electromagnetic spectrum are gamma rays, X-rays, UV rays, visible, IR, microwaves, radio waves. X-rays and radio waves which will have a high wavelength. Radio waves will have a high wavelength compared to X-rays. What about the frequency and energy of radio waves compared to X-rays? The frequency and energy of X-rays will be very high compared to the radio waves. Can you explain the various parts of a colorimeter? The various parts of a colorimeter are a photo cell. Let us start with first part that is the source, light source, light filter, a cell in which we keep the solution, a photo cell and an amplifier. What is the use of filter in the colorimeter? Filter is used to select a particular wavelength. Can you explain monochromatic light? Monochromatic light means light of single wavelength, single color. Can you explain one more thing? Suppose an object looks to be red in color. Is it the light which is reflected or light which is absorbed? The color of the object is actually the light which is reflected by the object, not the light which is absorbed by it. A solution which looks red in color absorbs bluish green light. So the color which we see for a particular object is the complementary color, not the color which is absorbed by it. The solution which looks bluish green absorbs red light and reflects bluish green light. And this is why, this is the reason the color of the solution looks bluish green. What are the advantages of colorimetry? There are many advantages of colorimetry. Even traces of substances can be determined with great precision and accuracy because we don't require a high concentration of solution. The solutions of a particular species always will have the same lambda max if they are in the pure state. So in this way, if any impurity is there, the lambda max will change. This will help us in determining the impurities or toxic substance present in any substance, any given food item. So it is very useful for forensic lab, for uh, criminology and in uh, detection of impurities in the medicines, in the food items. So these are the important applications of colorimetry. Can you tell the limitations of colorimetry? There are many limitations of colorimetry. First is we need the colored solution. If the solution is colorless, we have to decide some or choose some reagent that could develop a color which falls in the visible range. The solution should be a true solution. It should be homogeneous. There should not be any turbidity. The solution, if it is colloidal in nature or it is a suspension, we cannot use it for colorimetric estimation. We have to always use the molarity, not the normality for determining or going for colorimetric estimations because it is the number of moles that absorbs the light. What is the cell in which you keep the solution called? The cell in which we take the solution is called a Nessler tube or a cubit. Can you use glass cubits? Yes, for doing colorimetry we can use glass cubits. But if we are going for 
spectrophotometry we have to use quartz qubits what is the source normally made up of the source is normally a tungsten bulb so is the principle for colorimetry and spectrophotometry same yes the principle for colorimetry and spectrophotometry are same it is based on the same principle i think i have covered most of the viabos equations in this video if you have any more doubts don't hesitate to ask me leave a comment in the comment box if you like the video we will watch more videos on more experiments till then take care of yourself and bye don't forget to share and subscribe my channel